Good day to you. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. It is the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and in the Gospel, we are reminded of the Lord's visit to the house of the sisters Martha and Mary. Martha is burned with much serving. Mary, meantime, is sitting at the feet of Jesus, just like any disciple. The Lord tells Martha that Mary has chosen the better part, which is listening to God's Word. While ensuring that our visitors are taken care of and are having a grand time at our place, may we remember also that listening to them is a pleasing form of hospitality. Mary chooses to listen to Jesus, and by affirming Mary that Mary is doing the better part, Jesus is breaking social strictures. Anyone is welcome to sit at the feet of a rabbi and learn from him. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the terebinth of Mamre as he sat in the entrance of his tent while the day was growing hot. Looking up, Abraham saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them, and bowing to the ground, he said, Sir, If I may ask you this favor, please do not go on past your servant. Let some water be brought that you may bathe your feet and then rest yourselves under the tree. Now that you have come this close to your servant, let me bring you a little food that you may refresh yourselves, and afterward you may go on your way. The men replied, Very well, do as you have said. Abraham hastened into the tent and told Sarah, Quick, three measures of fine flour. Knead it and make rolls. He ran to the herd, picked out a tender, choice steer, and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk, as well as the steer that had been prepared, and set these before the three men. And he waited on them under the tree, while they ate. They asked Abraham, Where is your wife Sarah? He replied, There in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah will then have a son. The Word of the Lord. since 
reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church, of which I am a minister in accordance with God's stewardship given to me to bring to completion for you the word of God the mystery hidden from ages and from generations past. But now it has been manifested to his holy ones, to whom God chose to make known the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles. It is Christ in you, the hope for glory. It is he whom we proclaim, admonishing everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. The Word of the Lord. Welcoming God. We are used to welcoming people into our lives. We have a word for it, hospitality. But what happens when you welcome God? Is it possible? for us to even welcome God, our Creator, someone greater than us and greater than everything. The first reading is from the book of Genesis. Abraham, on a very hot day, sitting at the entrance to his tent, sees three persons. Now, according to the reading, it is God who is visiting, who is passing by. Now, we do not know whether this is God accompanied by two angels. Later on, some Christian writers would say that this is some sort of an intimation of the three persons of the Trinity. We do not know, but the author of the book of Genesis says, It is God. The three persons symbolize for Abraham what we call the person of God. And look at how Abraham welcomed these mysterious men. Maybe from our perspective, we would say, is Abraham not overdoing it? Is this not an example of overacting? <laughs> if you are looking at this like on a stage. No. Abraham ran to the three persons. And he was not content in greeting them. He bowed before them as though the persons in front of him belonged to the royalty. Then he even begged them to come and to have water to bathe their feet with. And he begged them to stay so that he could prepare food for them. Imagine, he was not just saying, come, stay for a while. He was begging them. 
Look at the welcome that Abraham affords to them, renders to them, to them who are practically strangers to him. And the exuberance of Abraham's welcome of the Lord is in a way highlighted by the comportment, by the attitude, <laughs> by the response of the three mysterious persons. They just said, yes. <laughs> Very briefly, curtly responding, okay, okay. So, you have here, wow, shining, almost uh, by contrast, the exuberance of Abraham's welcome of the three persons. And uh, he had the meal prepared for them. He had even a steer, you know, uh, butchered and, and uh, prepared you know, as a meal for them. And while they were eating, the three persons asked about Sarah, the wife of Abraham. And Abraham said, well, his, she's in the tent. Just like any regular woman of that time, she would be in the tent. It is not proper for her to do the entertaining. She is in the tent. And now came the word of one of them. I will come back at this time next year and Sarah will have a son. Abraham welcomed God and that welcome of God led to a promise, a word that needs to be welcomed. We know later on how they would react. Abraham would laugh. Sarah would laugh almost in disbelief, but you need to welcome the word of the Lord, the promise of the Lord. This is the experience of St. Paul. In the second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, St. Paul welcomes the sufferings that he must bear for the sake of the church. He welcomes suffering. Isn't this weird? <laughs> Would anyone welcome suffering? We might say yes, on certain conditions. And St. Paul says, I am willing, I welcome the sufferings, what, which is lacking huh? in the sufferings of Christ for the sake of the church. So he has this vision of the church as intimately connected with Jesus. Jesus the head, the church as the body of Christ. And the suffering of the head, Jesus, continues in the sufferings of the body. And St. Paul is welcoming those sufferings to complete what Jesus did not suffer yet for the sake of his body. And if we are flabbergasted by such a hospitality to suffering, we look closely and we see that that is part of St. Paul's welcome of Jesus, welcome of the mission that he has received from Jesus. St. Paul was commissioned by Jesus to preach his word. St. Paul welcomed the word of Jesus, a word of commissioning, so that he could proclaim the word about Christ, our hope of glory. And for Christ, if you welcome Christ, you welcome a mission. You welcome even the sufferings that your mission entails for Christ and his body welcoming the Lord, welcoming His Word, welcoming His calling, welcoming the sufferings that come with mission.
The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Luke Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord Welcoming God Welcoming God who comes to us in Jesus. In the first reading, the second reading, we see how welcoming God involves welcoming His word of promise in the case of Abraham and Sarah and in the experience of St. Paul. Welcoming Jesus is also welcoming a mission and welcoming even the sufferings for the sake of Christ and His church, a suffering that is entailed by the mission. Some of you might be already thinking of, wow, the difficulty of welcoming God. You said, wow, <laughs> but wow, that is the most important thing to do, to welcome God into our lives. We are back to this journey of Jesus to Jerusalem as recorded by St. Luke in his gospel. Jesus is determined to journey to Jerusalem to face his destiny, to fulfill his mission. But in the journey, there was a bit of respite, a bit of rest to visit friends. And we have a very human situation here. Jesus stops at the house of his friends. Martha and Mary, the sisters of Lazarus. And the two sisters welcomed Jesus. A friend. Maybe they also sense that there is something quite unique and special about their friend Jesus. So there is this maybe intuition that welcoming this friend is much more than just welcoming into their house an ordinary passerby. And Martha, her character spelled out in many passages in scriptures, Martha was busy with the demands of hospitality. We can interpret this in terms of maybe household work, especially preparing a meal. Mary, again, true to her personality, as depicted in the Bible, in the New Testament, sat at the foot of Jesus, listening to his words. You see this seeming contrast. Mary moving around, especially in the kitchen area, to prepare a meal for the honored guest. And Mary seated there at the feet of Jesus, listening to his words, absorbing his words. And this occasioned a complaint on the part of Martha telling Jesus, look, look at this, how unfair. <laughs> My sister Mary you know, left me alone to do all of this household work. And Jesus said, well, leave Mary alone. She has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken away from her. The better part. Jesus presents Mary seated at his feet 
This is the posture of a disciple, the posture of a learner. And at that time, most, if not all, of the students of rabbi were males. So Mary here is taking a posture that you do not see among women. But she's there, taking the position and even the bodily posture of a disciple, of a teacher. And she listened. She welcomed the words of the Master. Welcoming the words of the Master. This is the better portion. And that should not be missing. That should not be taken away from anyone. The hospitality that is due to the Word of God. This is the foundation of all other acts of hospitality. Jesus is reminding all of us, not just Martha, that fundamental in discipleship and mission is to welcome God's Word. Without God's Word as the foundation, how could we welcome? How could we welcome the strangers? How could we welcome mission? How could we welcome suffering like St. Paul? This is a reminder to us. Be hospitable. But first, be hospitable to the Word of God. This is the mark of a true disciple, especially in the Gospel of St. Luke. A true disciple listens to the Word of God and then puts it into action. That is the total hospitality and welcome. You welcome the Word of God and then put it into action. I am appealing to everyone. In our world today, there are so many people who are being rejected. We long to see again the experience of Abraham welcoming strangers, welcoming strangers profusely. But nowadays we see strangers, especially those in need, refugees, forced migrants, fleeing from persecution and poverty, being driven away, driven away, not being allowed to set foot on dry land. We see many people because of their addictions, because of the problems that they face, because of their misbehaviors. They're not welcomed even by their own families. They're being sold, betrayed, and even put to death. Now, how do we restore that welcome? Welcome first the Word of God. Like Mary, listen to Jesus. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. Listen to Jesus. Welcome the Word of Jesus and then put it into practice. When that happens, True hospitality will be recovered, will be experienced in our world. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Tomorrow, we are going to celebrate St. Mary Magdalene, the one sent by the risen Lord to His Apostles to proclaim the resurrection. She is referred to as the Apostle to the Apostles. The elevation of her liturgical commemoration from a memorial to a feast came after Pope Francis issued the decree 
Apostolorum Apostola in 2016. Feasts rank second only to solemnities in terms of significance in the church's calendar. The decree thus places Mary Magdalene on a par with other apostles, a fitting recognition of the singular grace and mission she received on Easter morning. It reads, Mary Magdalene's beautiful legacy has been eclipsed by the unfair association with the anonymous sinful woman who washed the feet of Jesus with her tears, which also led to her sexualized depictions in art. But with a much-awaited clarification, thanks to Pope Francis, hopefully we can look at Mary Magdalene in a more truthful and brighter light. She models for us generosity. She and the other women helped provide the means so Jesus and his apostles could go to places and carry out their mission. She models for us faithfulness. She never left Jesus from the time she followed him up to his final hours on the cross when other disciples had left him. She models for us hope. She mourned the death of Jesus and went early morning to the tomb to anoint his body, but only to be consoled by the risen Lord himself. Her experience at the empty tomb, although at first bleak, reminds us that the Lord will never leave us in despair. Friends, we pray for the grace of becoming like St. Mary Magdalene. Let us grieve the death of the Lord, its many faces today. But after that, let us rise and wipe our tears, because He is still calling us by our names, sending us to bring His message of hope to everyone. St. Mary Magdalene, pray for us. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how can we make listening to the Lord the better part of our day? Paano natin magagawa ang pakikinig sa Panginoon ang pinakamagandang bahagi ng ating araw? The second point is, how can listening to the Lord be closely connected to the service of neighbors and strangers? Papaano natin maiuugnay ang pakikinig sa Panginoon sa ating paglilingkod sa kapwa at sa mga dayuhan? Come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love, the love of God and neighbor that Jesus showed us, the love that values truth, justice, life, and peace. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created anew as children of the light, witnesses to the gospel. And you shall renew the face of the earth by transforming our doubt into faith, hopelessness into courage, and callousness into compassion. Amen. Friends, 
We have heard Jesus speaking to us through the scriptures. It is time to go forth and fulfill his word. See you next week here on The Word Exposed.